structure in music. I'm going to show you some different forms. I'm going to use a bridge first. So all music is uh, composed of um, usually an idea or a structure. It's kind of like having um, a blueprint, if you say, or no, not so much blueprints, but think of like a, you know how when buildings are going up, they've got all the steel poles are sticking way up, you know, a couple hundred feet in the air. And it's like they've got their, uh, their structure outlined, but they don't actually have like the floors or the, the walls or the windows or the stalks or whatever inside there. So that's what this is. It's sort of like an outline of what will be in the piece. Okay. So hopefully this is interesting. I'm just going to show you a couple different forms. So the first one we're going to look at is a form called binary form. Now binary is for two. That's what it basically means, binary. You know how binary code is all ones and zeros? So this represents two parts, basically an A section and a B section. So your A section could be like, okay, and your B section could be, so you could be like, that's your A section, that's your B section, right? No, that's very simplified, but this is sort of how it works. So there's these different forms of binary. There's symmetrical binary, asymmetrical binary, and rounded binary. Now, I didn't write binary in front of them all, but, but you actually could. You could write uh, symmetrical binary, asymmetrical binary, and rounded binary. Okay, so the first form. The symmetrical binary basically means that it's symmetrical. You know, it's evened out. A section and B section are equal, so there's no power struggle here. It's all just equal terms. So basically, it's sort of like an, you know, an argument where someone gets to say something and the other person. So they only have the same allotted number of words. So here's how it works. So the binary starts off with the A section first. So it starts off in the home keys, generally. So whatever key the piece is written in, like G major, you start with the G, whatever. It's going to start with in G major. And then what happens is when you get to the end of your four bars, that's why the number four is written here. Because uh, generally we'll be doing four, uh, they do, they give you four bars and then four bars. That's how all these little mini lessons work and there's that lesson in the Greek uh, form. So we got four bars and then at the end of four bars, then you do an open tatum. So that could be something that's like imperfect. So it could be like uh, one to five. So you could do like... Okay, so you do that to make it sound unfinished, and then you go into a B section. The B section goes to the next four bars. And what's going to happen is basically it's going to go la 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 la, and it's going to uh, generally go into another key, generally probably the dominant key. So if you're in G major, you would go to G major and play around with the G major thing. And then four, the other option is uh, you'll go to the relative minor. So the relative minor is G major to A minor. So you might play around with A minor for a little bit. And then at the last end, when you quickly modulate back to C major, and voila, you do a closed tatum, which is a five to one tatum. So like this. Something like that. And then it would signal the end of the piece. And you'd be like, we're done. So that is a symmetrical binary. So very, very simple. You could try writing your own symmetrical binary piece, if you would, following your own guidelines or whatever. Now, asymmetrical. Now, this is uh, referring to something that is, well, asymmetrical means it's not symmetrical, right? This guy's got, I've got more cake than you do, <laughs> right? If, if you cut, you know, if you cut a cake and, well, what I would do with my brother or whatever, if there's one piece of cake left and we both want to have the piece, uh, we'll be like, okay, you cut, and uh, I'll choose this piece. So then the person's like, okay, we got to get this even, otherwise if I make it lopsided, we both take the bigger piece, and then we get stuck with the cleaner one. So we don't want to cut asymmetrically when we're doing that. We want to cut, you know, symmetrically. So asymmetrical is if you have a bigger piece than the other one. So generally, um, it follows the same format. Uh, like, it starts with the home key, ends in an open tatum, and then it goes to either the dominant or the minor. Key, so A minor, A symmetry, whatever, in G major, and 
then instead of going for four bars, it goes even further for eight bars, so double that, okay? Now there are cases where you could have uh, eight bars to the eight section, but it's not very common and you probably won't see it, so. Um, the D section is what has the, uh, this, the eight bars, okay? And then at the end of that, it has a closed cadence. So it has the same format, the only difference is eight bars versus four bars. Now, rounded binary. This is interesting. So, rounded binary starts in the home key with A section, four bars, and then it ends with an open cadence. Okay, same thing here. Now, we've got four bars of the D section. Okay. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The D section goes to the A section right after that. Okay. So, it's like it molds back to. So this D section leads you back to the A section, and then, so you repeat the A section the exact same way you did it there, but at the last ending, so you alter the ending, so instead of ending with an open cadence, you end with a closed cadence to make it make sense. So, I don't know, you would do like, uh, so Basically, it's like da 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 dun dun, and then dun 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 da 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 dun dun, like that. That'd be sort of the idea with rounded binary. So it these are the same, but the different. The key thing with rounded binary is that it's altered, so it's the same theme, but it's the ending is changed. Okay. Now let's look at the last one. So this one is called ternary. And it has nothing to do with binary, it's not considered a binary, it's just called ternary. Whereas this one is rounded binary, which has the bunch of strings in the bottom. So ternary. Now, the telltale sign of ternary is almost all the time you will see V3 alpha and A, which means finish, you know, go back to the beginning and then stop when you get to finish that line. Which means the end. Okay? So you would have a piece like this laid out and you would see you go down and then it end and then there'd be a ternary and you'd keep going and then at the end it says you see alpha ternary so you go back to the beginning and then finish there. Now this is how it works. So you've got four bars with an A section. Start in the home key and look at this. They give you a closed cadence right off the bat. So it actually feels like oh I'm done here. So it, sh it feels like you should be finished there. But then they go on to a B section with another four bars and give you an open cadence, different than like how this looks with three. Then they go back to the A section and it's closed. Now, this is what so many people can get confused when they're trying to figure out, well, is it rounded binary or ternary? Because they follow the same format, A, B, A, or A, B, A. The difference, here's the difference. It's all in this first opening theme. Is it open when it starts or is it closed? Because this one is one that is altered, so it changes the, the next time it comes around. Sort of like it's the, you've learned your lesson now, and now you know how to finish the job. <laughs> Versus you already knew how to finish it and you just wanted to get on with your work. So then you come back and finish it again. Also, the big telltale with ternary is that it'll say D3 alpha and A, but it's not a guarantee that they're going to do it. Sometimes they might just write it all out. And then you have to be able to diagnose, is it closed and closed, or is it open and then closed, is the main theme. Okay? <laughs> okay, so, hopefully that explains some things. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out a book that has some examples of uh, these different patterns I'm going to point them out to you. Okay? So let's get that. Alright, so the first one we're going to look at is symmetrical binary right here. Now this is my old, old book from many years ago. Look at all my lovely check marks. These were the very first ones I ever did. Okay, so this one had eight bars that we were doing. Now, um, so I had to label the A section here. So as you notice, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're done here. Now, as you notice, this and this do not look exactly the same, do they? No, they don't. So, for instance, there, right here, those aren't the same there. So it's a lot of matching. My B looks more like a D there. Anyway, 
<laughs> so we have eight bars of the next section, and that's it. That's symmetrical binary. Okay? Ta-da! That simple. Okay, now let's look at asymmetrical binary. So, asymmetrical. Well, this one has eight bars too, and guess what? I just think I realized that I remembered this wrong. It was actually four bars and then four bars. So I remember that it was four bar measures, but it's actually twice. So everything that I just set up there before, just think of it as eight instead of four. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. Anyway, okay, so asymmetrical binary. Now we have our A section, which has eight bars there, two sections of four, and it's in the hem key. So you name the key, whatever, and then you go along, and then you name the cadence, perfect open, blah, 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 and ta-da. Then you go to the next section. B, now look how long B goes on for. It goes on for a double. Now, how do I know it didn't go back to A? Well, it doesn't have the same, it doesn't have anything that looks the same. Nothing. It doesn't have the same notes with the same rhythmic elements. It has to be like a carbon copy. And then it goes along just for 16 bars, and then it finishes. So that is asymmetrical binary. Now, rounded binary. Okay, look at this. There's my A section there. Four bars. Very good. Now here, I've got four bars. Aha! Here we go. I wasn't totally wrong. So it just depends on the piece. Like, it's okay. So I'm happy. It's been a long time since I did this stuff. Okay, so then there's, we have four bars of the B section. Now, look at this. Doesn't that look a lot like that? Yeah, we have the E here that goes down to the A, blah, 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 blah. And then look down here, it goes dun, 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 And then dun, 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 dun. Hmm, that looks almost identical. Now look at this. It ended on the C here. And it ended right there. Now, what was the difference? This key was written in A minor, so that it couldn't be a perfect. It was a perfect open, as in it was written in the key of C, which wasn't the actual key of the piece. It was written in A, so that makes it open. It has to be in the key that it's supposed to be in to be closed. So that's in the A. So it's perfect closed. Now, see how they've they've altered it? Because that's here. It went da, 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 and ended on the C here. They've altered it to end on the A. So that's the alter, altering that I was talking about. Okay, so, okay, and then here's ternary. So we've got our A section here. Did I not do this one? I guess not. Must have skipped over it. Anyway, now look at this. Ha ho, there's the Fernet I was talking about. And there's that. So when we see that, we just know it's a ternary right off the bat. Now, so look at this. This would probably be, if it's in C major, I can see that's a perfect close. Because that is with a C at the top, and it's uh, just a one chord, and that's a, a five chord over there. So that's perfect close right there. So that means you could have ended the piece right there if you wanted to, and even tells you to later. Then we go along and play the B section. Da -da 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 -dun. And it says go back. So we go back and da da, we finish with Fernet. There you go. And that is ternary. So yeah. Uh, th these are just some other examples. And yeah. Anyway. So there we go. That is basic okay, stuff. Thanks now for let's watching. Stop. And uh, I hope you guys learned some stuff from that special analysis. That's what it's called. So you guys can. Uh, start looking up uh, different pieces and see if you can figure out what they are. Now, you'll probably only be able to recognize ones that are really Baroque serious. So look up, uh, like, you know, little Bach pieces and little Handel pieces and some little Mozart pieces, and you should be able to get an idea of what's going on now. Now, other things would be, like, Nota Allegro form and um, Minuet of Trio and Scherzo. Those are other different patterns out there. I didn't really have much time to get into all that stuff today, but yeah. So uh, I'll leave that up to you if you guys want to go and uh, check all that stuff out on the internet.